Okay, so we've got three brackets here, and I'm going to blend them in a way that is very smooth and very clean. And I also need to cut out these windows and do a little bit of color correction here and there. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I've got the middle exposure on the top, and I just want to bring that in the middle so it goes from top to bottom dark, mid, and then bright. The bright's gonna be our base. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use our middle exposure to bring down the highlights. And then if we need to, we can use our dark exposure to bring down the highlights even more. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use the channels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hover over the RGB channel and then hold down control or command and then make a selection and then hit function shift F6 or just F6 if you have a keyboard that is a, a full layout. And we want to feather this by 200%, or 200 pixels, I should say. And then just add a layer mask on here. So basically, what we've done is created a luminosity mask out of this RGB channel, and that is, that's blurred, so it's really smooth. So it's really blending in very well, and I like it a lot. So now what we need to do is we need to blend in these windows. And these windows are actually very simple um, because there, there's no blinds or anything like that on them. It is just very easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the pen tool. We're gonna make sure that our rubber band is turned on. And we're gonna start from the corners. And we're gonna go ahead and just, to complete that path, and make it a selection we're gonna go ahead and hit control shift enter and that'll create a selection and we'll do that with all of these window panes uh, just make sure we get that looking nice and I'm not too worried about this but I'll show you what I'll do what I do um, in case it, it actually bothers me but these the uh, things like this where you have these like whoopsie days these little uh I don't know pieces in the window I usually just cut corners right there um, and I just leave them in there so let's go ahead and just bring this in here and I'm gonna feather that by one pixel and I'm gonna add a layer mask to this dark layer so that looks pretty good um, and if you have an issue with these being a little bit too dark just group this and we can go ahead and start to make a little selection, these little selections around here. They don't need to be perfect because nothing in life is perfect. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and just keep making these selections. I probably won't need to do them on these because that actually looks pretty decent. I'll feather that by one pixel and then I'll hold down, excuse me, I'll hold down Alt or Option to make that into an inverted, excuse me, an inverted mask. So that's what our mask looks like. This is what our other mask looks like. So when you group things, it's super easy, easy to keep track of. So that looks pretty good so far. Now, what we need to do now is we're gonna fix the ceiling. I always fix the ceiling in my shots or in my edits because I like my ceilings to be white or at least pretty close to white. So I'm just gonna make a quick little path around here, make that into a selection using the same method that we used for the windows. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make sure that our keyboard shortcut is set up for image. Scroll down all the way to replace color. And I usually set it to Control Shift Alt R. And I accept that and I'll click OK. So when I hit Control Shift Control Shift Alt R, there we go. Um, it brings up my what you call it? Replace color prompt. So what we can do now is just bring this down to about like negative 45 seems about good. And then if we ever have an issue where this corner is like a little bit 
just a little, little bit. Um, why is that doing that? So it's a little bit uh, not desaturated enough. We can just hit the Alt key, select an area that is the the uh, color that we want. That'll sample it and bring it down to our swatches. Hold down Shift and make sure the blend mode is set to color. And we can just blend that in. So it's real subtle, but it does make our ceiling more even. And I'm going to make sure this is set to off because this is kind of annoying. So now we just need to do a little bit of exposure balancing to make it a little bit more appealing. So let's go to select color range, shadows, and we're going to bring up the fuzziness to about 90. Let's set the range to 60. I'm going to click OK. And we're going to feather this anywhere between 150 and 200. I'm going to go with 200 for this one. And hit Control M. That brings up the, uh, the curves prompt. I'm going to bring up the midtones. up to about here I'm going to bring down the black point so what we can see is that the exposure just gets more balanced Let's see right there beautiful and just so I can get the highlights a little bit more kind of evened out I'm going to go to control shift I I'll invert that selection so we're basically selecting the highlights instead of the shadows control M brings up our our what you call it <laughs> what you call it wow our uh, curves and then bring down the curve so that looks pretty good so before and after subtle but it's way more balanced and I like it now what we need to do is just a little bit more color correction because we have edges that are more saturated than the overall image like this is a little bit more saturated, but I'm mainly looking at this. So let's go ahead and go to Control Shift Alt R, and I'm going to set this to 45. I'm going to make sure that's selected. I'm going to bring this down because you can see that's the area of of uh that's really weird looking. I think that looks pretty good. Cool, that looks good. Now, we just need to do some sharpening. So I do my sharpening with Unsharp Mask, and I always use an amount of 150. That's a little bit high for some people. Maybe 100 would probably be better. But I like my images to look pretty sharp. So let's go ahead and bring up our rulers, which we can do with Control-R, and we'll bring in some rulers and I think or some guides I should say control T will bring up your transform prompt hit control shift and we'll drag these corners so they are aligning with these guides so I think that looks pretty good I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation back into the image I'll add about like 10 just to lighten it up. This is bothering me, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Shift Alt R. And I'm going to select this area, bring up the feathering a little bit, or the fuzziness, I should say. Bring that down. That looks pretty good, but it's a little bit desaturated, so I'm going to bring this back in the history state. I'm going to bring that to the previous history state and I'm going to check this box this box will basically allow me to use the history brush which is Y on the keyboard so history brush and I'm going to resize the brush and I'm just going to paint in the areas that I need so that looks cool alright cool that looks pretty good now I think that's pretty much it. Let's check our colors here. 
It's a little bit of magenta, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. A little bit of blue. I'm going to go with like 80 for blue. Hmm. I was 60 for cyans. Bring the greens down by like 15. And then I'll bring in saturation to about 10. Cool. I do think it's adjusting this too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our previous history state that has that color information. And we'll bring that back in with our history brush. So I'm going to use a flow of 10%. Just bring back some of that color. Now I love using the history brush. It's super weird. It's a weird brush, but I love it because it's... I, I use the history panel a lot, so being able to switch through my history um, states is really nice. So that looks pretty decent. So let's go ahead and flatten that image, and we're done. Let's get rid of these guides, and we're looking pretty good. I think it looks good. So that's pretty much how you do it for like a really basic image. Um, I will be expanding on this um, with a lot more difficult images, but I just wanted to get the basics out. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, advice, just let me know, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. All right, thanks.